In the first four years of the calamity, production in the nation's factories, mines, and utilities fell by more than half. In 1933, 25% of all workers and 37% of all non-farm workers were completely out of work. For context, at the peak of the Great Recession in 2009, the United States hit approximately 10% unemployment. In the United States, the Great Depression started at the end of 1929 and lasted until the United States was drawn into World War II in December of 1941. The Great Depression was an entire decade, and it remains the defining example of macroeconomic failure. I believe the Great Depression, along with the Industrial Revolution, are massively misunderstood periods of American economic history, in large part because misconceptions are taught and perpetuated within our school systems, and they are taught as history, but they require an economics lens. There are some great high school history teachers out there, so I hate to clump them in with this bad stereotype. But in this lecture series, I'm gonna talk about the average high school history teacher's story of the Great Depression and why most of what you think you know about the Great Depression is probably wrong. Now, as I said, there's lots of great high school history teachers out there, and there's lots of great resources online as well. For instance, Crash Course History has great videos on US history, world history, European history, you name it. However, Crash Course History in their episode number 32, the Roaring 1920s within their US history series, they do a lot of the same things that the average high school history teacher does when it comes to setting up the Great Depression. And I think they're wrong with a lot of the stuff. The standard story is that the 1920s were too Republican. They're not progressive enough. They let businesses go without regulation. Republican presidents were elected and they stacked the board of the Federal Reserve with business-friendly conservatives. Consumerism and the use of credit developed during this era where we let capitalism go unhinged, unregulated. And this was at the root of the perils we'd face in the following decade. During this time, there was a rise in wealth and the share of income shifted more towards the rich. This is emphasized by the average high school history story, right? But note that this does not necessarily mean that the poor were made poorer, as is often taken as the implication. The rise in wealth and the share of income shifted more towards the rich. The rich. The high school history teacher takes from this and seems to imply that the wealthy businessman got control of economic policy. With their enormous wealth, they made the economy unregulated. They gained at the cost of the poor and got so greedy that they forgot that regulation protects against capitalism run amok. Some actually try to tie the ideas of the 1920s inequality into a very basic macroeconomic understanding as well. So from digitalhistory.com, they say, quote, because the rich tend to spend a high proportion of their income on luxuries, such as large cars, entertainment, and tourism, and save disproportionately large shares of their income, there was insufficient demand to keep employment and investment at a high level. All of this unhinged capitalism culminates with a stock market crash of 1929 and the decade of economic dismay that followed from the unhinged capitalism, the inequality, and the Republican free market businessmen of the 1920s. There are many stories out there and they don't all mesh together, but at the root of the high school history story, and of the crash course history story is that this worry about capitalism gone too far is the root cause. At the root of the story is that capitalism will dig its own grave. The typical high school history teacher's story of the Great Depression is one where the economics simply don't really make sense to economists though. The basic story is that the stock market crash of 1929 is the result of unregulated capitalism. The crash is the cause of the depression. Hoover was the first to get a crack at rescuing us, but as a free market champion, he simply allowed capitalism to swallow itself. 
He did nothing, and we as a country needed more. Capitalism need to be saved from itself. Massive government action was required. In comes FDR. It seems that the high school history teacher loves to tell this story of FDR riding in on his white horse. And heck, at least FDR did something. I don't remember much from my public school education, but I do remember my high school history days learning all about FDR's wonderful alphabet agencies in the New Deal. The CCC, the CWA, the AAA, and the TVA, all of these different organizations that were put forward as FDR coming in and enacting a plan to pull us out of the depression. But when I hear this stereotypical high school history story of the Great Depression, it raises a lot of questions for me. I say, well, but wait, isn't it true that FDR ran against Hoover, claiming that Hoover was running on two status of a platform? Isn't it true that for over a year after the stock market crash in 1930, unemployment averaged only 8.9%? That's high, but it's no Great Depression of a decade. Isn't it also true that many other stock market crashes didn't lead to 11-year depressions? And didn't the stock market rebound some after the initial crash? How does that square the circle with this story? Also, the Federal Reserve was relatively novice at this point in time. They were trying new monetary policies and money is one half of all transactions. The Fed doesn't usually come up in the standard high school history story. Shouldn't we consider their role at all? There are all kinds of factual and magnitude problems with the typical story. And very little of it is based in economics, which is odd considering it is an economic depression. So what we'll do is we'll consider what we can know about the economics of the Great Depression from our different approaches to macroeconomics in this series. We'll cover a number of different macroeconomic theories and see what we can say about the economics of the Great Depression. To kick off this video lecture series, click the video here to move into a review of different macroeconomic ideas. So if you're not quite familiar with these macroeconomic phenomena, you can click here to overview what these macro theories say happens when it comes to recessions. If you are familiar, well, this is a chance for you to review these concepts and understand them a little bit better so that we can understand the story of the Great Depression.